saying that. I am not saying that. That is rude. Okay, everybody, let me get rid of that stick. I just heard it was bent. Hey, I fixed it. I'm telling you. Okay, everybody, welcome to Festool Friday. Festool Friday at noon means it's Festool Live. And have we got a show prepared for you today? Okay, as I always do, I'm going to introduce the room. We have right here Big D. Hey, hey. We have on the camera, we have Chris Seibert, known as Chris Seibert. Over here, we have Minnie. Woo! On the whiteboard. Online, we have Brent and Travis. Travis, I think you're there, Bubba. Okay? But I just want to let you know, and this is really important. This is a shout-out to you, Christopher, in Malta. I got a quick question for you. Are there any nice hotels there? I'm just checking for next year. We might be visiting you. I don't know. Okay. So I also have to mention this. This is so important for all of you. Around the world. Next week, we work off at of Eastern Standard Time here in the U.S. Okay? It's 12 noon now. Next week, we will push it back an hour to 1 o'clock p.m. Okay? January 29th. January 29th. One and only. One and only. We're, we, we got something that came up. We got to take care of at noon uh, or just prior to noon, and we don't want to start too late. We want to make the announcement. That's all I'm going to say. I'll make the announcement at the end of the show. So there you go. Don't forget to subscribe to YouTube. It makes it look like we're doing our job here. Okay? Also, it's going to be on Instagram and Facebook right after the show. Don't. Oh, I love it. Don't forget to hit the bell. I think I covered everything. Yep. Okay. Now, this week we're going to have a little bit of fun. Uh... It's because of you. The viewer has asked us several times. Uh, in December, we did routers every other week. We covered the, the 1010, the MFK, 700, the OF 1400. I think we've done a couple shows on the OF 1400 over the year. And also um, the OF 2200. Now, we've always showcased the OF 2200 on a certain... Uh, routing, we, I think in our catalog it says routing aid. Mm -hmm. uh, over the years it's been called a plexiglass template or plexiglass jig or whatever you want to call it. We're going to go through today and I'm going to show you the, pl the routing aid. It's an accessory. This is an accessory only episode. Okay, so here we go. This is what we call, oh, you know what? Let's start with this. This is the U.S. catalog. Okay. So when we look at this right here, let me just show you. Look, this is the routing aid. Look at the picture right there. Chris, you get in there? Zoom in there? How's that look, Big D? Good? It looks terrible. Okay, well, it's, <laughs> look, can you tell from that picture, everybody? It says routing aid. There's the description. Okay. Can you tell? Whoopsie. Hashtag whoopsie. Can you tell it's this? Not at all. So what I want to point out is this is so important. Every time we've done a trade show, and we highlight this on a door, okay, to do some mortising, like a lock mortise or a door sweep, automatic door sweep, all right? People go, when are you coming out with that? <laughs> okay, we go, uh, uh, I think 2000, in the early 2000s. <laughs> People go, I never saw that in the catalog. We do an interior door class right here, okay? And everybody who's come to class goes, when are you coming out with that? <laughs> and I go, it's, been, it's in the catalog. Okay? What people don't realize, and hopefully today I do this justice and show you how substantial this piece of plexiglass is. Okay? What you don't realize when you look at that picture is these are 14 millimeter thick fences. Okay? Made out of Lexan. Okay? It's substantial. It's with some barrel bolts here, some knobs. D a second port for dust extraction. The primary port is on the router, okay? And this is a 12 millimeter thick mounting plate. The hole here is 30 millimeters in diameter, okay? Now, when we were do setting up for uh, the live and doing a dry run, of course, these are all the different mounting holes, but I grabbed the light, and what people don't see until they're faced with this is, Chris, let me see if I can get this. Once you mount it, there's a scribe center line here, 
And here's the missing part. There's a scribe center line here. So you can set this up absolutely perfect to do all kinds of mortises and some trick joinery, as I call it. There's also a scale here, all right, where you have your zero mark. And this is where it gets kind of crazy. I always look at things like this. I always look at what's the minimum thickness you can go down to. It's 18 millimeters, okay? And let me just grab this, Chris. I'm going to just jump over you really quick. Right here, look. Big D, you getting this as well? Yep. Okay, check it out. I can do three-quarter material, okay? But I can also open it all the way up this quick, okay? And yes, my lineup's easy because I work off a center line like everything Festool. To what? Uh, 119 millimeters. Now, if you need to know those dimensions in Imperial, three-quarter all the way to four and 11 sixteenths. You know how I know that? I wrote it down on the table. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> it comes with mounting screws and ready to go. So, once again, check this out. You can mount it to your 1010. Okay? You can mount it to your 1400. All right? And look, you can mount it. To, what did I use? I used to call this the shouter, the shaper router. You can, met, you can mount this to your OF2200. Okay, and the reason I used to call it the shouter, it's kind of like a handheld shaper. And you know what's unbelievable? We are five minutes, ten minutes in to this episode, and Chris, I want you to pan over. Oh, my goodness gracious. I love it when you guys tell us where you're from. Look at all those. Minnie has to erase everything I wrote up there. Wow, look at all the cool places. Okay, back over here, Chris. Sorry. <coughs> okay, isn't that unbelievable? It's going to take me a while to uh, say all those places, which I love to do. Keep telling us where you're from. It's important to us. Okay. So what is... Hey, Mo! Oh, okay. So throughout the course of this episode, I'm going to say what's your time worth. Okay? Because guess what? Can I make out of plywood a jig like this? Okay? And, and cut all these dimensions. Okay? Go and source some, some screws and some bolts as I lose them all over the floor. Okay, uh, align it so it's centered on my router. Of course I can. But for me, that would take four, five, six hours to get it right, and then I'd have to make another one for every single daggone router. Okay, so I just want you to think of what your time's worth. When you look at, I want you to see the value in this, okay? And we'll go through it. Okay, now, next. I have it mounted to my 2200. Okay, I'm going to take this off, okay? because I'm going to actually run the 2200. I want you to look up. <coughs> Excuse me. Chris, check it out. That is our interior door, okay? And what we do is that's a tongue and groove. Greg Pellini um, designed these, and he designed the class for us, where that's a tongue and groove uh, out of uh, eastern white pine. We do the tongue and groove insert to the top panel and bottom panel, and we do it all from scratch, Okay. But what we do is we need to insert, this is our tongue and groove panel, okay? We need to insert that panel, and we have to create a groove in our rails and styles. So that fits in there just like this, okay? Pretty easy. So, of course, what do I do? This is three-quarter material, 18 millimeter or 19, whatever. I got the right bit in there, okay? And we're going to create this groove. Okay, now setting this up could be problematic, but not with this jig. Follow me on this, everybody. I'm going to set it on here. I closed. I'm going to grab my light. You're good, Chris. I'm going to actually go behind you right here. Yep, and I'm going to have you come right over here. Look, I lined up. I scribed the center line on my style, okay? Now, I'm going to mention this <coughs> as I do this. I'm going to make a mark on this face right here. And you'll see it. I have it on other places. This is the face. Okay? Does it have to be exactly in the center? You want it as close to center on this rail and style system as possible. But what I always do is I make sure that fence is on that face at all times. We do that for a parallel edge guide. Yes, I know this is centered. But in my eyeballing or looking at this and measuring it, that may not be exact center line. It probably is, okay, I'll mark it center line right here. There's your mark for center line, okay? 
So what I did is I took these fences and I adjusted them. And if we come in here, you'll see it. Look, I got that scribed line right on that center line. And you'll see how I move it. See that? Everybody following that? Okay, mm -hmm. so I've done that. I've taken those fences. I've tightened the knobs down. And we're good. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. So for that top rail, if we look at it, it's five inches. I measured here five inches for my rail. And what did I do? I made my mark. The middle rail is six inches. I did the same thing. And down here, this is a seven inch bottom rail. Okay? And I made some marks here and here. And we're going to key in on this one. This is the center of my door. This is where my lock set's going to go. Okay? But I need to create this groove. So, what I want to do is in the plans that Greg drew up, we have a one inch or seven eighths. Uh, thing. You see how I scribbled that? 20 millimeters? I scribbled it out. That's three quarter or almost seven eighths. I scribbled it out because that's not where I want to stop. That's where I want to stop my bit. Okay? It's a 20 millimeter bit in there. Check this out. I want to stop it at 10. So that's why the center line is so important. I hope you're following this. So when I take this and I bring this over here, Okay, I don't want to have to eyeball the flute of that bit at all. I want to take my center line, and this is where we're going to come in here, Chris, to see this. Okay, that's the bottom of the, the rail, the center rail. Okay, and that is where, what? That's the center of my bit right there. And you see that center line? I lined it up. Now, I don't want to leave a light there while I'm routing to stop it there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some stops. One to stop it, because I'm going to be going this way with the router, okay? I'm going to grab a clamp, and look where I'm going to put it. Right here on my style, okay? So there we go. Got it? Good. Now, over here, i got to take it, and it's the same thing. Look, that is where I want to stop the bit. That's my center line. That's the top of my bottom rail. I'm going to bring this over, and let's get the line up on there just so you can see it, okay? I'll tell you what, center lines make things effortless if you, if you can trust them, and with the Festool system, you can. Now, how am I going to set up this? Come over here so we can see this. I can't clamp onto the rail with that clamp. So what I did is I grabbed the block of wood, and this is why it's great to have an MFT and all the dog holes in here, because I could take that and create a stop this quick with this. Let me just zip this around in here. Whoop. Catching a knob. Oh, I'm catching that panel. There we go. I'm just going to lock that in like this. Lock this one in here like this. And there's my stop. Cool? Just verify it. I'm going to bring it in. I can see it. Boy, that, that light makes a difference. You know that? It has to be a Festool light, by the way. Okay, good. <laughs> good. All right. So what's the next increment of measurement? Well, the plans call for a 12 millimeter half inch depth of groove. Okay, that's easy. Okay, let's set the depth. I love teaching people how to set depth. I got a scale here, right? Okay, I don't like using scales, but I'm going to take this and set it at zero and lock it down. Now, I could look at the scale here. Come over here, Chris, so you can see this. Look, and bring it up to half inch, but I don't like that. I grab something I know, it's 12 millimeters of depth, right? It's a domino. So I take that, I bring it just like this, and I set it on my depth stop, and I lock it in. Now here's what's really cool. Look what it reads. Half inch. Okay? Don't I try not to use my eyes in woodworking. Okay? So there we go. I'm gonna take it like this. I got now I don't have to think about it. What do I have to do? I have to hook it up to the dust extractor and hook up my dust extraction. Okay, so there's you remember I said you have dust extraction here on the plexiglass routing aid, right? But that is the secondary. I'm gonna zip over here really quick. This is why we have a Y piece. I actually call this the flux capacitor. Okay, many of you are giggling way too much. Who is? Mark from Ork. How are you? Okay. This is a Y piece, and hopefully, Chris, you can come over here and catch it. I have it on the CT. I got my CT all the way up. 
okay? And that is where I have a Y fitting. So I have two 36 millimeter hoses. I want to get all the dust. I'm going to take this over. I'm going to hook it up here to this port, okay? And let's make the mortise. Now, what I'm going to do is, this is why you have a depth stop turret. My stop at 12 millimeters is right here. That's what I did. I didn't do it off this one, the very final. I did it off this one. But rule of thumb, it's not good to take a 12 millimeter mortise all at once. Yes, can we do it with the 2200? Absolutely. There's so much daggone power in this, it's ridiculous. But let's take it in two steps. Let's do it safe. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on, lock it in. Whoopsie. See? I'm not practicing when I'm preaching. I'm going to take it over and hit this stop first. Okay. Oh. I don't have enough. I guess I'll take it all at once. Make sure my hoses are clear. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to make sure I get all the dust out of the mortise. I'll come back and just make sure I get all the dust. So you'll see, and let's zoom in, in on here. Look how, there was my center line. I set it up here, and look how it ended up right on that mark. You can get as accurate as you want with this plexiglass routing aid. Cool? Whether you hook it to the, what, 2200, or if we come over here, all right, we hook it to what, the 1010. Say I'm doing a lock mortise, okay? You just got to get the right bit to do this, a good size length, okay, to get the depth you want, okay? Take it in steps. But now you can set it here and here to do that mortise. Now, here's the question I always get or what it's always pointed out to me when people look at this plexiglass routing aid. Oh, I could do that with two edge guides. Okay, so we can do a little bit of math here if you want. And that's why I have these pieces of maple here. Okay, I have a 2200 set up for this. Okay, check it out. I could do the same thing with this, can I? But it's all about what? Stability. Okay? Look, I have this as tight as can be. I got it lined up because this is the beauty of the Festool router. Come over here so we can see this. There's my center line. I have a scribe center line here, right? So there's my center line. I have it lined up, right? Here and let's follow me over here, Chris, back over here. See it? I could take my, I could take my and pinch my edge guides, okay? But I want you to do the math on this. How much one of these costs? The rods come with the 1400. How much one of these costs? I'm not going to call it out because it's different in different countries around the world, okay? And then another one, so you got to have what? Two pack, right? Okay? And it's less expensive than overall routing aid? Absolutely. But it's stability and what your time is worth. Check this out. I can hold it like this, but I don't have a lot of bearing surface on here, okay? And you got to be really good at running this. Okay, it's awkward. Now, someone will contradict me. I've heard this before. Well, these holes inside the edge, guys, as I flip it over, I can make auxiliary fences like this. And I made these the exact size as the plexiglass template. So I have to cut my maple, I have to mill it precisely, I have to tap the holes, I have to go source more screws, I have to do this, this, and this, and this. Where out of the box, okay, I have something ready to rock and roll. It all is what your time is worth. How many times have you built a jig and it's taken forever to do, right? and it's built for one specific purpose. It isn't adjustable like this is, okay? It was for one particular size, right? You spent forever, 
What do you do? You throw that jig away? No, you put it up on the shelf because someday you may need that. Guess what? You probably never, ever use that. I call those time trophies because you're daggone proud of it, but you never use it again. Here you have a fully adjustable day-in, day-out jig for mortising. Whether you're doing what? Building your own interior door, doing a lock mortise, doing an adjustable sweep, but I'll take it one step further. Years ago when I came to Festool, I saw this plexiglass template jig, and I went, you know what? I made a specific jig back in my shop in Fort Lauderdale, and it was to do this. Come over here so we could see this, Chris. It's to do the female pot or the pin for a sliding dovetail. Okay? I could not believe how easy this is. By the way, this piece of wood, uh, for my demonstrations, I think this is 13 and a half years old. I made it right away. Okay? Because I saw the value of that. Look! I put a dovetail bit in here. You could do so much killer joinery with this. I mounted a 1010. Because back then we were showing it with a, what? An OF2000. I mounted it to a 210, uh, an OF1010 because I wanted to show people you could do sliding dovetails with the Festool system. Okay? And <coughs> since then I've done several of these. Okay, this is a pedestal for a, a table, right? So there you go. You can do sliding dovetails. It all depends on what. What is it? What's the, what's the thing that changes a lot is the bit you put in there, okay? So uh, just a couple of things. You'll see I have blue tape or X's on fences for the jigs. That's because I always work off the reference face, okay? Because sometimes my center line, <laughs> because of my eyes, isn't perfect, so, but as long as I work off the same face, or okay, same consecutive face, that's woodworking 101, that's how you get it. So, I think I answered all the dimensions on it. I think I covered quite a few applications. I'm sure there's thousands more. I saw a video by uh, a really cool dude I was privileged to work with years ago. His name's Gary Katz. And on his website, this is Carpentry, he does a, uh, a multi-point block mortise that's incredible with this system okay with the uh, routing aid so go check that out too there's all kinds of great videos on youtube of this so i just wanted to point that out uh we're testing the waters on some accessories here at fest tool live um i think i covered all the questions uh, oh minnie i love you she wrote one o'clock january 29th next friday fest tool live so <laughs> oh my god What's happening, man? It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Okay, so here we go. Chris, kind of zim over here. I don't see any questions. I'm sure Brent and Travis answered all of them. I got one random one from Sergey, just to make sure that he knows that you're being safe and that your knife is not put away wrong. That's no. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> this is my uh, Ulfa. This is a killer. But Oh, thanks, Sergey. Uh, <laughs> Actually, this is my favorite one. It's the least expensive Ulfa because you see that end right there? That's a, they, they call this the painter's one. I can open up all my paint cans with that, stain cans. Cool? So thanks, Sergey. You're awesome. Okay. Woo! I love it. People watching out for us. You got to because I'm always cutting myself. You guys do that. <laughs> all right. So, wow. Okay, here we go. We got people watching from Seattle, Memphis, Tennessee, DIY woodworking classes in Fontana, California. You watching? I'm watching you. You guys better have Fest Tool. Somerset, Kentucky, Balsta, Sweden. Woo! Hey, you guys, we ought to do a Fest Tool live from Sweden, shouldn't we? Woo! I'm talking European tour. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. Okay. Lithuania, Shrewsburg, UK, Buffalo, New Hampshire, Raymond, Maine. Raymond, Maine, you're always there. Okay, East Yorkshire, England, Medford, New Jersey, Cairo, Egypt. Wow. Vienna, Austria, Flossmore, Illinois, Malta. Christopher, how you doing? Louisville, Kentucky, that's how you say it, Louisville. French Alps, Poole, Dorset, England. Cool. Jersey Channel Island, you're always there. Morgan Hill, California, Haverhill, Mass. Woo! Cala, Columbia, South Carolina. America. Wow. Pensacola, Florida. Edmonton. Charleston, West Virginia. Mechanicsville, Virginia. Mm, Pumpin' Bill, Australia. 
Okay. So close. So close. Cal- uh, Pumpinville. Okay. <laughs> South, South, Southern California, Zealand, Denmark, UK, Paris, France, Czech Republic, Louisville again, Columbus, Ohio, Richmond, Kentucky, Germany. Really? Goal. <laughs> Bedford, England. Ky- oh, I love this one. Kyalami, South Africa. Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Tupac. Tynesburg, Bur- Tynesboro, Mass. Lausanne, Switzerland. Bosman, Montana. Woo! Denmark. Netherlands. Tupac. St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. Poland. Tupac. Ireland. Pakistan. Athens, Georgia. Hudson, Wisconsin. Caldwell, Idaho. <coughs> Eatonton, Eatonton, Georgia. Bucharest, Romania. Wow. Argentina. Woo. Kent, England. Pittsburgh, Fenton, Michigan. Brussels, Belgium. <coughs> France, Germany, Arizona. Homestead, Sweden. Wiltshire. Matthias, Sweden. Chichester, UK. St. Osseth, UK. Dayton, O. Ohio, home of the Air Force Museum. Okay, everybody. Did I tell you we love you? We love you. Thank you so much for watching episode 39, The Accessory <laughs> Festool Live. Hey, I think I speak for everybody here at Festool Live. Did I tell you we love you? Thank you for watching. We miss you. We wish you could come and visit us here. I hope and pray you're staying safe. Please wash your hands. Safe distance. We're going to get through this. You probably heard that a hundred times, but you know what? Let's just do this so we can all play. (laughs) All right. Thanks, everybody. Rock and roll. It's the weekend. It's a wrap. Woo.